We are also following new developments in the investigation of that deadly plane crash. The NTSB has now finished its field investigation. But as RTV6 reporter Tanya Spencer found out, the cause of the crash won't be known for some time. The three main components we look at are the man, machine, and the environment. After studying the wreckage since Sunday, NTSB investigators have determined the landing gear was down, the plane had fuel, and everything on the aircraft appeared to be working properly when it crashed while trying to land at the Greensburg Decatur County Airport. The two couples on board were killed. Pilot Don Horand, his wife Barb, and friends Stephen and Denise Butts. What we've been able to determine so far is that we have not identified anything wrong with the aircraft at this time. The pilot activated runway lights were working, but it's not clear whether Horan tried to turn them on. A plane carrying friends, also flying back from a weekend in Florida, tried to land just 20 minutes before, but couldn't due to the dense fog. The indication that I got uh, from the pilot who uh, flew the approach previous to the accident plane stated that he had no visibility or, uh, as far as when he, he never broke out of the clouds, never had any sight of the runway whatsoever, and then did the missed approach. After missing, that pilot diverted to Columbus. Investigators say although both aircraft had radios, there's no indication the first pilot tried to communicate with the second plane. The pieces of the plane's wreckage will now all be moved from Greensburg to Washington, D.C., and the rest of the investigation will take a minimum of six to nine months. Reporting in Decatur County, Tanya Spencer, RTV6. Horan had flown a total of nearly 400 hours, 52 of them in that particular plane, which he had recently purchased. He had logged 29 hours in instrument only weather conditions, either real or simulated.